Hi, Jill Tisbury at Fired Glass and today we are going to look at Bendit moulds. So what on earth would you use these for? Well, I've got my coffee, I'm feeling Christmassy, so I'm going to show you. Right, so bend it moulds then, what are they all about? So um, these are they, um, they come in all sorts of sizes. I get mine from Paul Gardner. Um, I know you've probably heard me talk about them before if you've seen some of my other videos with moulds. They come in all sorts of sizes. Um, we call them bend it, so I'm not sure what everyone else calls them. Um, but these are ideal for making um, the little stand-up pieces that look like this. So. Here we go, some we made earlier. Let me just make sure I don't drop these. So this, this and this are all made with those moulds. Um, you can see I've got some much smaller moulds and this one is actually made on this tall mould. Um, so that's what we're going to make today. Um, I love doing these because it uses up all the scrap glass um, we make little hanging trees, we make wreaths, but these go really well at our craft fairs. And these, um, made in exactly the same way, particularly this one over here. Um, this one, however, let me just move these, ooh, move these out of the way. This one is made with our twisties. So this is before it's um, slumped. Um, and when we pull our vitrograph at the end of it, we, we get quite a few twisties. Um, so we create little trees that look like this. All of those you can do with the Bendit mould. So let's get started, eh? OK, so we've got our mould here. Um, this um, has been coated with boron nitride. Um, some people just don't bother coating them with anything. Some people like to use kiln wash. I find that boron nitride works for me. I've tried do, using metal moulds without anything on um, and uh, wh whatever, for whatever reason, um, I am not successful with them that way. So boron nitride, just need to paint it on. Don't spray it because you'll, you'll waste um, a lot of this stuff and it's expensive. If you want to learn how to coat these moulds, then there's another video. We'll stick the link up here. Um, but there's another video that we've done that shows you exactly how to do this. Um, and how to use it. Right, so got our mould, got it all prepped. So how do we know what size glass to use on this? Um, you can see um, with this mould here, we need to understand um, this length and this length. It's really not difficult at all. If I turn that mould round so that you can actually see, these pieces of glass that I've got here are probably all scraps from when I have been making um, waves or curves. So there's quite long pieces um, that we can chop down. The width itself doesn't really seem to matter. Those smaller bendits that I showed you, a lot of people are using those for table settings. So um, I've got some pieces here. Um, this one looks like a, a really good candidate. It's just a normal piece of tector. Um, looks like it's about 10 centimeters wide, something like that. Um, and if you pop that on there, you can see that actually fits quite well. Normally, I'd be saying that you want to chop some um, off the end. So let's just pop this one on and see what that looks like. In fact, that one I wouldn't even bother chopping either. But um, this looks about perfect, to be honest. What you want to make sure of is that this bit here, the overhang, obviously, is not longer than the depth of this. Um, so I don't know what the depth is. Let's have a quick look with the ruler. Look, get the centimetres. So the depth on here is 10 centimetres and what we've got here is in a six and a half centimetre overhang. Absolutely perfect. So, got your glass. Obviously it needs to be um, either as wide as your Bendit mould or just uh, narrower like this piece is. Um, your um, Glass obviously is smooth on one side, rough on the other if you're using Tector. Um, so I tend to work on the smooth side just because it's easier to glue stuff down. What I'm going to do here, just take a, a Sharpie and I'm just going to draw along here. 
So you can see I've got a line now and that line is going to tell me that I don't need to go beyond that line. So if I bring back one of the pieces that I've got here that we made, you can see, obviously used a shorter mould here, but that line, I wouldn't have gone beyond that line because this is the bit that's going to slump backwards and obviously you don't want anything bobbly underneath that because it's not going to sit right. So get your sharpie, draw your line underneath and that's it. You're good to go. So let's move this out of the way. And we're now good to go with our tree. Entirely up to you at this point, just move this glass out the way. Just don't go off the edge of my desk. But it's, it's entirely up to you um, whether or not you draw guidelines for yourself um, on here. I mean, if you really roughly want to, then you just go up the center. Obviously, Sharpie burns off in the kiln, but you don't want too much on there. Straight the way back down. And that might keep you on track with um, your shape. So we're aiming for this sort of Christmas tree shape like this. I'm going to do it with some green. Um, I like the blue, it looks lovely, but I've actually got some green shards here that I've chopped up. Um, so this is all um, scrap glass really, where maybe I've cut out some um, stuff when I've been making Marini, um, but I use these. So these are my uh, mosaic clippers. And uh, as long as you use them wheel side up, that bit down, you can see it's quite easy. You just get them in between there, give them a, a squeeze, and you actually cut a few shards off, um, you know, your scrap glass. So we're going to use those. So I'm going to tip a few out so that we've got some nice um, vibrant colours to work with. I've also cut myself a, a pot for some, from some um, brown streaky glass that I had um, in, in a student pack somewhere. Um, it's up to you whether you want a pot. You don't have to. Your tree can go right down to the base. I just like to put a pot in there because I think it just looks good. I got some glue. So I'm using glass tack gel here and I'm just going to tiny, tiny bit of glue. You don't need loads of this glue. I'm just going to pop that in place um, to start me off with my tree. So we're going to try and build it so that we've got a lovely tree shape going on here and it's really quite quick. Then I put some um, glue, not too much, a little squiggle either side. I'll just wipe that round so that we've just got a smearing of glue that is going to keep it together nicely on there. Now you can either use tweezers um, or you can use your fingers. Either way, I've got a nice mixture here when you have a look at this of um, opal glasses and uh, some transparent glasses. So it's all um, spare stuff. So I'm, I'm not going to go through, you know, the colours that we've got because it's whatever you've got to hand really. So what we're going to do is start to build outwards. So if you think about a tree, it's sort of going to go out this way like this. So we've got some gentle curves going out from the top to the bottom. And it's just a case of you mixing up the colours and mixing up so that you've got something that's pleasing to the eye. I want another big piece, biggish piece. There we go. A green on here, I think, at the bottom. I think it's easier with my fingers. So let's just get some nice big pieces. If you don't like um, the piece that you put in, just pick it up, turn it around, make sure that you've got this nice curve. And I'm going to have this really nice mix going on between, as I say, opal and transparent, because um, I'm actually going to move these out to the edge because I want this to be a nice wide tree. Don't worry about this bit in the middle. Um, at the moment. So you'll end up with some gaps here. We're going to come back and we're going to fill in those gaps um, as we go along. So I think if you don't like it um, one way, if you prefer the curve on the other side, just turn it over. So don't just plonk them down and think, yep, happy with that. If you're not happy, move it, turn it round. 
this um, really does help if you do this little triangle on here because then it keeps you sort of from straying in terms of shape. This is probably easier, isn't it, to do with my fingers. Let's pop these down here. I could sing you Christmas carols, couldn't I, while I'm doing this? Perhaps not, eh? Oh, I like that that way. There we go. Nice curve there. Let's put some more green in. Again, you don't need to worry too much about structure. If you were making the standalone trees that um, we often make, like the little wreaths and trees as well, um, which hang on the Christmas tree, then you have to worry about the structure. Um, but because this is obviously on a, a base of glass, you don't worry about that too much. You just worry about the actual shape and that you've got a pleasant sort of tree looking shape and these are quite cool you can put candles behind them if you want um, we always recommend when you have these that you have the battery operated candles um, mainly because if you have a look at that the rake um, is quite steep going backwards you could bend your mold to make it less sort of leaning back but if you put a real one on there, obviously you, you'd end up with a hot bit on the top. So um, I think they look nice with a little bundle of lights. You know, there's battery operated tree lights that you can get. So they look nice with those on. So we often recommend that or a battery operated tea light. Much safer these days, I think. OK, so we're getting near the top now. I'm just going to shove these. Um, a little bit further together and when you get to this um, top piece you just think about what you're going to put on the top I've got some nice dichroic crystals so I'm going to use those oh, there's a bit of bling there look there's some aventurine green glass Need some smaller bits for here now when you get to this bit here um, it might be that you just want to take um, a piece which you've got a nice curve on it, like, oh, perhaps not that because I want a different colour. Let's find something. There we go. I've got no glue at the top there, so I'm going to put some glue. It just saves it shifting when I move from here to the kiln. So you could start putting a piece like this across the top. Oh, that's a little bit too big. Don't want that one. Perhaps want this one. There we go. And then either you're going to put a crystal on the top, or if you've got a tiny bit like that, that can go in there, and then we can have a crystal. So let's get one of those to begin with before we start going back down the centre. These look like rough diamonds, don't they? Beautiful. So I'm going to choose one of these, stick that on the top as my star. Let's just pop these back, get them out of my way. There we go. So now I'm going to come back down and um, do the centre. So I'm going to put a little bit more glue just here, just to hang on to these. And now I'm going to... It doesn't matter that it's sticking upwards, obviously, that's going to go down once it starts to slump. But you want to have them looking sort of natural over the top of that pot. It's kind of like building a brick wall now. <laughs> so you're in the middle of those, uh, let's see what else we've got in here. You're in the middle of the cracks or the joints. I don't want that. I think I'll have that one. So the bigger pieces look generally better at the bottom. There we go. Let's have a little bit of bling, some aventurine green in there. Don't have to be any set colours. You can just build it up nicely as you go. Mm -mm -mm. 
let's find some transparent green for there. Beautiful colours in here. I love these transparent ones because they're really sort of jewel bright colours, aren't they? <laughs> it's like Jenga, you're doing that balancing act. There we go. I like doing it this way because. Um, I like the effect that you get with the uh, the pieces pointing downwards. You just have to um, just be a bit patient. Don't go at it like a bull in a china shop because you want a nice effect. So just take the time. There we go, a little bit of glue there, I think, because that looks like it's slipping. There we go. That just stops it from jumping. And we're nearly there with our leaves. like doing a jigsaw puzzle without the box. <laughs> Let's see, put some more of this adventuring green in here. So we like that. Okay. I like this, I think this is peacock green. It might be peacock blue. Okay, I think, let's put some on top of here. This is probably my last piece to go in. <laughs> See, I always say that's my last piece to go in and then I find more to faff with. I think that is definitely it. Fabulous! Voila, we have a tree. So now we've got to dress the tree. Okay, so just shift these to one side slightly. So we recently um, pulled some new Marini, which... Um, this and the twisties and the stringers all available on the website and um, this is called snowberry and i like this it's uh, it's very christmasy at the moment so i think we're gonna have a few dots of this around whoa it's always the way isn't it let's just get that pop that back in there I'll tell you what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna put a blob of glue down here and I'm going to dip my marini into the glue instead. So the bigger ones we're going to just take those and drop them at the bottom. The trick here of course is to not get your tweezers covered in glue. Put the smaller ones um, at the top towards the top. You can do this with beads, so you don't have to have marini if you've got beads. You can use those, pop them on. This bit um, with the red, big red, is from the beginning of the pull. So it gives you quite a good variation across this, uh, this marini pull, which is quite nice on a tree like this. So we like this a lot.
See, it all goes quiet when I'm concentrating about where I'm going to put things. <laughs> Let me dig out some bigger ones. Oh, yeah. Shift him a little bit. I don't think he wants to shift. Now, the thing about this pull, I'm just going to dig around a bit here, is that we get pieces like this, um, which you're not going to see until I put it on. So let me pop that onto a piece. And you might be able to pick this up. But this um, looks like a little star, a little white star. And this is um, where the centre of it had um, sort of gone through the pot. And we ended up with this added bonus of these little white stars on there. So as, as you pull vitri graph like this, um, obviously as the centre colour fades away, you end up with these pieces that have got more white and less red in. And they look really quite cute. I think I need um, probably a couple more in the middle. Let's put that in there. Let's put this one in. Cool. So I think I'm happy with that. Let's get rid of my Marini for a minute. Otherwise I'll be gluing it all over myself. So last thing then on here, I think we need some tinsel. So I've got some red stringers that we pulled, I think last week. So they're extra fine. Let's just move that over there. And we can end up with, oh, need a bit more glue perhaps. Looks like it might be a nice curve. I'm just going to dip either end in the glue and just make sure it uh, it sits down there. But there's some nice curves in here that you can use to get them wrapped around the tree. Dip the ends in. Be longer bit. It's worth sorting through so that you can find some nice bits with curves. I think we might have some gold as well that um, works well. Ooh, that didn't want to sit right, did it? I think I want one more bit just across the centre. And that is me done. Oh, I've <laughs> just broken it. Not what I want to do. Let's get a nice curvy bit. There we go. So I want that to be a little bit longer. There we go. Lovely. Just chef that over, and I think that is me done. Fabulous. So quick and easy. Um, we're going to fire that on a tack fuse. So I'll give you the schedule. Um, and then once we've done it on a tack fuse, I'm going to slump it. Um, my slumping schedule in my kiln, um, I go a little bit hotter than the standard um, schedule that I know is on the bullseye um, schedules. But we will show you the schedule. If you find it's not as slumped as you want, then just increase that top temperature. I go to um, 670 degrees centigrade, I think, with mine. But um, we'll put that information on uh, with the schedule and we'll also put it in the uh, information below but there you go that is my bend it christmas tree using glass shards um, of scrap glass and a little bit of marini and uh, tinsel which is um, red stringers hope you enjoyed that um, like comment subscribe tell us what you think and um, hope to see your christmas trees when we uh, when we get back into the groups on facebook take care Bye.